Hello, it's Miss Shari again here. Today I am thinking a lot about images and how images are formed and what images we view and how that shapes our world and our, our self view, right? I was, we were driving around the other day and we came across one of these in vogue right now, Black Lives Matter signs. And I said to my oldest, how does it make you feel when you see that sign? And he said, well, it makes me feel hopeful. It makes a child feel hopeful. So I appreciated that. And so I'm also an artist. I'm a teacher. I'm a reader. I was raised by a family who worked in advertising. So I really think about what images I'm being fed or what I'm pursuing. And what I offer to my children, I've always tried to have them around different uh, images of blackness in a positive way. I have, um, and things that look like them, right? Little brown boys doing things that I'd like for them to be doing, and strong women, and Christians, and uh, academics, intellectuals, um, people who think for their own, people who go on adventures, people who help others, things like that are important to me that they see. There's, right, we've probably all heard this phrase, you can only be what you can see. So, um, so, you can see in the back, or in the background, this side too, that's some of their old art that I put in, in frames. I think it's important for every artist to see their work framed at some point. Or on the wall, or display, right? We all know about the refrigerator, but sometimes, as kids, we know that there's some things that go on the refrigerator, and then there's some things that never go on the walls. And I think it's important if you have an artistic kid or you value art for them to be able to put themselves there. So I make a lot of art. I don't sell a lot of it, but I enjoy making it. And I'm a deep thinker about things. So I'm always trying to think about this concept or how can I make it visual or how can I show it or how can I play with it or how can I experiment with it. And so I kind of get into this thing about, you know, words, what words can I put in or what words am I thinking about? Or when I see this piece, what words is it going to bring? Um, and then for black women, hair is a big deal. Skin is a big deal. Hair is a big deal. What I'm thinking about, what messages am I hearing? What message do I want to say? Will my voice be heard? So those are things I think about in my art and so I'm going to show you a few things that I've done, and then I have a project I'm working on today specifically to try to deal with some things that I learned a little bit recently and some stuff I've been working on thinking about. And you can just think with me. And maybe it'll inspire you to do some of your own thing too in some way that works best for you. So this is my little workspace here. So I'm going to show you some of this silhouette thing because, you know, we were all, well, maybe, maybe not everyone, but I was raised with European cameos, right? Little cameo necklaces and you have a silhouette and it's a European woman and you can see her style of hair and her style of profile and her nose and her lips. And I wanted to see things like that with African faces and African hairstyles. Something that looks more like me, right? I have a full nose. I've got full lips. I've got big, strong, powerful hair. So I want to see that stuff. So this was one. Uh... My butterflies, of course, I, I work in butterflies a lot. And so this woman um, is sprouting her wings, but also her hair is like a tree and it's like a fro. And, um, you know, there's a movement element. There's some nature element. But I'm thinking about these shapes, how we're kind of like a tree, how she's kind of like a butterfly. This one, super old one, but um, this one's called Freedom. You can see the word freedom. I wanted to do that, uh, or at least put honor toward Aboriginal Australian art. This dot technique, this dream time um, that the Aboriginal will have where you will have um, something that you are telling the story, an origin story, or you're, or you're telling something to make it so sort of a concept. Um, it's not the whole thing, but that's sort of an idea. So um, let's see, let's get it maybe a better angle there so you can see so this girl has that profile that I'm kind of obsessing with and I'm going to draw you in closer she 
She's trying to get her voice out. Her thoughts are radiating out. And her hair is free. This lady too, over here. Let's see if you can see her. So she sees things. She's got no voice. She's got thoughts in her hair. There's another one here. This is her silhouette. She's got her fro. She's silent. She's pondering. This one up here uh, sees things that kind of leak out of her. So she's mostly the sight in the mind. So that's that. Then over here, I'm locking now, so I'm trying to begin with changing my shapes here. So this is stage two. Of, you guys might have seen this if you're a Facebook friend of mine. This was when I still had all my hair. And I was trying to think about that shape. Down here too, when I still had all my hair and I started experimenting a little bit more with that shape and making it related to a tree and such growth, right, flourishing, really celebrating her nose and her cheekbones and her full lips, African shapes. Again, she's kind of cocooning. This girl doesn't really know. This piece doesn't really know where to go yet, so we're trying to figure out. I'm still trying to figure out with this piece what to do with it, but it's kind of like the cocoon opening type of a thing. So now I'm working on this piece, and it's kind of like quilting, where I've got a bunch of scraps, so you can see in the bottom, those of you who watched my Zen Tangling video, You'll see in that bottom left corner that Zentangle. We've got some paint that we're doing a little nature thing on that side. But here, I've got this girl coming, so I'm going to try to leave it here so you could see just me doing this work today. So I decided that words were going to be the important part here um, and trying to decide what words to use and yep I cut up books I decided what book was I going to murder today I'm going to murder uh, the ABC murders by Agatha Christie because I found out that it was originally called 10 little n words and then it was changed to 10 little uh, not the proper indigenous term which is what I read when I was younger and then it was changed to the ABC murders. Um, I'm sorry, no, I'm thinking of and, the, and then there were one. That's the one where the titles have changed. So I'm sorry, that's a different text. But the point was that I'm revering, right, these texts, but it's just, it's, it's text. These are some ideas that I can rework and murder <laughs> in a different way, right? I can make them like a seed that goes into the ground and dies and create something new. So if I'm gonna think of something that I'm gonna cut up and I'm gonna use, these words have gone into this person and they're going to come out deconstructed and beautiful is my plan for them. I also found it very interesting as I read this through for the third time that September 11th came up. I happen to be a September 11th survivor, so it's really interesting how that actually comes up in a lot of things. So I'm going to post you here so you'll actually see me working upside down, and then I'll turn you around at the end okay now let me give you orientation first so this is her lips I've already cut out the base for the lips the base for the nose the base for the forehead okay so now use my good old matte Mod Podge I'm going to use an empty container with the lid because if I get too much Mod Podge, it's hard to put it back in the container. Um, and it might be able to come out of this container, but otherwise I can just put a lid on it and save it for something else. Let's pour a little bit of that guy in there. Again, this is matte. I usually prefer glossy, but this piece I want to be matte. Now for this guy, I want it to, I do want her to have locks flowing you can see my fingers flowing out toward the nature part. So I'm gonna make the paper mimic that. 
by tearing it and doing it that way. And you can see I did, you might not be able to see, you might be able to see, yeah, I think you can see this little dark brown is the silhouette that I drew already on my board. I got this, this cheap particle board from Menards. Sometimes I prefer to use this to canvas because it's cheaper. This is a hobby for me, right? I don't have a lot of budget for this. So for my Mod Podge, I put it on first. For this particular project, it does not need to be smooth, but you could use a brayer to make it smooth, which is a tool that will help you to push it all the way flat. But for this particular project, I'd like to have texture, so I'm not worried about it being flat. And I am deliberately leaving some empty spaces here, a little bit of overlap. I didn't quite get a good Mod Podge under there, so I'll put that under there. Anywhere you want it to go down, you have to have it under and above. Okay. I'm leaving this part. She's going to see something that she's thinking about. A thought will come out later. I don't know what the thought is yet so for now she's gonna stay and I'm just gonna pour all this right on top I want to make sure it's all covered so that it'll not only stick down but also harden this will also archive it so say one day somebody decides that I'm fabulous and they want to <laughs> buy my art, it'll make it last for, you know, centuries, God willing. And if there are any rehab artists that need to work on it to rehabilitate it, it this will make it a lot easier for them. It won't let it discolor. So it's a good archival medium too. You could also use gel medium if you have access to Michael's, any art store that might be open during pandemic. Okay, I'm gonna start her locks flowing here. And the idea for this for me is that I'm going to have this as my base layer. So there's going to be paint above it. So again, I'm deciding its shape. So I don't really need to worry about, although I never worry about perfection, but I don't need for it to be perfect. Yep, upside downwards. Look at that. It was important to me what part of the story I used. I mean, not that anybody will ever care, but this is the part of the story where the true intentions of some people who are claiming to be helpful, their true intentions are coming out at this part of the story. Uh, 
how they feel about women is coming out at this part of the story. Um, some archetypes that maybe were around, well, I guess they're still around now, but apparently it was appropriate to have those because she includes them, Agatha Christie, as though they're just common knowledge, the way that she chooses to use them in the text. And there are intellectual claims made based upon the men's perspective of how the women might spend their time or might interact with them personally that affects the, what they feel about the women's intellect. Okay. She's got some... She's got some locks. Let's give this girl some lips. Let's give her the bottom of her nose and let's give her some lips. This container's getting on my nerves. Just gonna pour it right on there. I'm finding as I'm working with this material that it has a sort of a coating on it so it's not absorbing this um, Mod Podge, which is nice, but it has enough nooks and crannies in it that the Mod Podge is also falling down. Oh, Miss Shari, should have been a little more careful about the Mod Podge. Look at me, messing up, changing my mind. Are you noticing that there's lessons in every single part of this? <laughs> I hope you are getting life lessons and art hacks. Okay. She's got more of a silhouette. She's got an upper lip. She's got a lower lip. She's got an open mouth so she can speak. We're going to give her some more hair. This is going to be a really great guide for my paint. Later, I like the shapes that I'm seeing come up here. Okay. Sealing them all off. Four them to be sturdy, archivable, keep their color, give me a nice rough, I'm sorry, not rough, stiff, sturdy, smooth texture. I can put on top whatever I want. I really like decoupaging. I like gluing stuff on stuff. Let's get the 
this girl's lips. Well in hand. I also love, one thing I do love about Agatha Christie is I'm reminded about this character, Miss Thora Gray. And she spells Gray, G-R-E-Y, which is the way that I was always taught to spell it, British way. Which, people don't do these days. It's good to change and grow, but it's also good sometimes to be different. I like old things. I like making old things new. All right, so let's take a look at the progress that we've got here. And then we'll come back and work on this together another day. You can see her lips and her hair starting to form that there. And we'll get more. Thanks for visiting the studio. We'll see this guy back in a few days.